Greetings to all of you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's a matter of great joy for me to be with you all once again and share from God's word the Bible. We are studying about breaking the bonds of legalism. To break the bonds of legalism, we need to know who our God is. Bible explains to us the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in the message of the gospel that Christ came into this world and to save the sinners, he took upon himself the punishment of their sin and died on the cross of Calvary and he was buried and he rose again from the dead. And this message, the message of the cross, that through the cross, through the death on the cross, Christ has purchased salvation, Christ has purchased forgiveness of the sins and this truth uh, exhibits certain things about uh, God and his character. That's what we have been studying over the past few classes and we already uh, enumerated the, the, uh, the attributes of God. God is a God of love and it is his love which prompted uh, your salvation. He is a God of kindness. It is his kindness that prompted uh, our salvation, not anything in us. We also learned that he is a God of mercy and it is his mercy, uh, unprompted mercy, which uh, prompted him to offer a salvation, a call to salvation, an invitation to salvation, invitation to forgive sins of the sinners. And, and, and uh, it is not based on something what we did or what we accomplished. No. Uh, and we also learned that he is a God of grace. His grace, rich grace, magnificent grace, abounding grace. We saw that. And last word, God is a God of patience. And uh, we uh, looked at Second Peter chapter 3 verse 8. And we read like this. Do not let this one fact escape your notice, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like one day. That means God is uh, uh, beyond our time limit. You cannot count days and months and uh, see how God is doing things and when God is doing things. He works in an entirely different timetable. He is above our time limit. He is not under 24-7 timetable. He is an eternal God. From eternity to eternity he planned things. And his timetable works perfectly and precisely for his glory and for our good. And then in verse 9 of 2 Peter chapter 3, we read like this. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient. Patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, for uh, but for all to come to repentance. So, uh, uh, to, to fulfill the promises, God is allowing uh, some time so that some more people will repent and that shows God is patient. He was patient towards you. God deferred the judgment that this wicked world deserves in part so that he could gather in you and he defers his judgment now so that others would still have time to come. You understood? Why God has not punished and allowed the world or the human beings to perish in hell? He is patient. And his nature of patience, his attribute of patience is allowing us more time. It allowed us time so that we could come to Christ. And even now he is allowing time so that other sinners also can become saints. Patience means forbearing. It means that God was willing to wait. He showed self-restraint in, in the face of provocation. That we see even uh, in Christ on the cross of Calvary. He was provocated many times. To show forth his power. To come down from cross. But as he was engaging in a great redemptive work on the cross of Calvary. He could not be provoked out of the cross. Because he was a patient God. God does not hastily retaliate against sinners. We may retaliate against certain things what people say or do. But God is not hasty. So he does not hastily retaliate against sinners. He does not promptly punish them, immediately striking them to death. No, he is not doing that. We are all here still breathing and living today. We are all here because God has shown forbearance. He has been forbearing our sin. 
He has been patient with our iniquity. He has been patient in our transgression and in our guilt. And we, you know the difference between transgression and sin and iniquity. The Bible is the book which comes and picks up uh, every single strand of sin in our life. See, uh, uh, transgression means you stubbornly oppose what God has told. God has told to do these things. You stubbornly oppose that. That is transgression. You go out of the bound. You go out of the boundary which God has laid. Don't go out of this. You go there. It is rebellion. And it is stubbornness. It is arrogance. And it is pride which do that. And that is a transgression. Then sin. Sin means miss the mark. Miss the mark. It's like a bullseye and if you need to get to the center of it to score and every time you do certain things in the light of God's uh, perfect impeccable holiness, you always miss the mark. Why? All our good deeds are with mixed, mixed motives. All our good deeds have some manner of self involved in it, self uh, indulgence in it. And we, we think about ourselves and our glory and our name and our pride, all those things come uh, inevitably. So it's all mangled with a sin. And that's why the word of God says that all your righteous deeds are like filthy rags before God. Because it is not done perfectly, aimed exclusively and focused at the glory of God. Missing the mark we have sinned. And then we know the uh, uh, iniquity and uh, transgression. Iniquity means you perverse the truth. You pervert the truth. You get it twisted. About God, man have twisted ideas. About our interpersonal relationship and what we do and what we say, people misunderstand and twist it. And that is our mindset. So in every way, we have been provoking God, we have been rebelling against God, we have been missing the mark often, there were sins of commission, there were sins of omission, there were things what we did, uh, the right thing in a wrong way, right thing with the wrong motive, right thing with the wrong attitude and thinking about ourselves more than of Christ, making more of us uh, more than of Christ. So in all these things, God has been forbearing and he has been patient. It is not about us, but it is because of his inherent nature of patience that we are alive today. And this is undeniable. God restrain, restrained the judgment that you deserve so that you could be shown this kind of rich grace, rich mercy, rich love, rich kindness and the key. Now again we come to the key. We are studying uh, these truths so that we will be able to break the bondage of legalism. Breaking the bonds of legalism. To understand that and come out of the legalistic mindset and legalistic attitude and some entitlement. I, I deserve certain things attitude to, to come out of it. We are learning the character of God. And the key to this is that God's patience is what allowed our salvation to happen not anything in us not and if i am saved today it is not because of anything what i do or who i am it is all because of god's patience his love his mercy his kindness we need to pull all these things together and have it start to shape the whole way that we think about God and the world around us and our own multiplied, seemingly infinite and unending shortcomings. Infinite shortcomings are there in our life. Unending shortcomings are there in our life. Our efforts are always incomplete. Our motives are always mixed. Okay? So, we... Look at all these words which uh, explain the greatness of God and then we understand. We understand uh, uh, certain things about God. We understand certain things about the world in which we live. We understand certain things about ourselves. And then we say that I am finite and there are infinite uh, uh, multiplied shortcomings in my life. 
God is a God of love towards sinner, sinners, of kindness, of mercy and of grace and patience. Let this deep balm enter deeply into our souls. And telling with a, like an example, if you have some pain, you put some balm. If you have the spirit of legalism, you apply this balm, these words of hope into your life. And let this balm enter deeply into your soul. God did not grudgingly save you. God did not reluctantly save you. It pleased him to do so. And it pleased him because he is a God of love. It pleased him to save you because of his kindness. It pleased him to save you because of his mercy. It pleased him to save you because of his grace. It pleased him to save you because of his patience towards uh, sinners. Forbearance towards sinners. And he did not promptly come and hit you for your shortcomings. And it pleased him to put those attributes on display in your life. And let you be eternally beneficiary of who he is. More than what he has done for us, we need to think of who he is. The gospel is something which is amazing. Because it displays every character of God, the attribute of God. And we have explained only five words of hope. But for a person who rejects the gospel, a person who rejects such a free gift of offer which God of the universe is giving to the whole world. God, Bible says that God so loved the world. He loved everybody. There is no bar for a country. No boundaries of the country is involved. Man or woman, high or low person, a wise person or a fool, black or white, he has not put any bar. God so loved the world. God loved you. God loved me. God loved every sinner. The greatest, worst sinner to the lightest so-called sinner. A sinner who has gone into wanton sin, public sin. A sinner who is uh, uh, having only private sin and having an outward appearance of a hypocritical, uh, outward, uh, uh, outward show of good person. No, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That is what the Bible says. And in that situation, we must always remember God's goodness, God's characteristics. God never accepted you because you were worthy. It should be settled in your heart. God never accepted you or will never accept you because of your worthiness. God never accepted you because you were somehow obedient enough. There may be strands of obedience, but there are so many ways. In the light of his pure eyes, you have not obeyed to his expectation. You have made statements which you knew it is not true, but you uh, anyway made it. You did things which you knew it was wrong, but anyway you did it. You thought many bad, lustful, coveting thoughts, even when you knew that it is wrong, you anyway thought about it. So, you have not been offered a salvation not because of anything what you have done or an obedience which was good enough. That was never the case. It was never the premise where God worked out salvation for you and me. It was never the cornerstone. It was never the foundation by of why you came to Christ or why you can come to Christ in the first place. Christ receives sinners because of his grace and his mercy. His character does not change. And do you know what that means with the, these five attributes and five words of gospel hope? You know what it means for you? Do you know what that means for you today 
as a child of God. If you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord. If you have called like how uh, the disciple Thomas called unto the Lord Jesus Christ. My Lord and my God. He had doubts about the, the credibility of resurrection. He had doubts whether Christ has uh, truly risen or not. But when he was convinced, when Thomas was convinced beyond any doubt, when he saw the nail prints, when he saw the, the piercing wound on his side, he believed and he called my Lord and my God. If you are not my Lord and God, I am gone. I will perish in my sin because it is my sin that you bore on the cross. It is my curse you were carrying on the cross. It is as a substitute that Christ was dying on the cross. Thomas understood it and Thomas called him my Lord and my God. And if you are a person who have called the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and your God, then these attributes of God, what does it mean to you today? It means this. It means that God does not grudgingly keep you. God does not grudgingly love you now. God was who was patient with you before you came to Christ in all your dishonesty, in all your rebellion, in all your lust and in all your stubbornness and in all your anger. He patiently endured that so that you could come to Christ. He graciously, patiently keeps you. So the disposition of God, the character of God never changes once you become a child of God. The same loving, kind Merciful, gracious and patient disposition of God towards sinners is still alive in your life uh, and that liberates us. That liberates us. Romans 8.31 says, What then shall we say of, to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? Verse 32 of Romans 8. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? So, if you are a person who is in great need of something, I will tell you, you need to take comfort from this verse. You need to take comfort and hope in this verse. Because God has given the greatest gift which he can offer. He emptied himself. He emptied and gave his own begotten son for you and me. And I will tell you, it's not like we giving our son. Eternal father and eternal son was an eternal fellowship from all throughout eternity. And to savor that relationship, to, to cut that relationship because he was made sin for us. He bore our sin. He, 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 it was imputed onto him. He was punished as if he, ca he did all the sins of all the world. And it is a terrible thing to carry the weight of sin. We know how awful it is to understand uh, or uh, bear the weight and guilt of sin. What you have committed. But then imagine uh, the, the sin of the whole world is being uh, put onto your uh, head. And you are going to suffer for somebody else. Christ did that. God allowed Christ to go through that. And with him, along with him, God who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? So, you can have everything what you need from the hand of God. If God is willing to give his son, he is willing to give anything lesser than him. If God dealt with you so graciously while you were a sinner, now that you have been brought to Christ, you have repented, you have confessed Christ as your Savior, do you think that somehow the attitude of God or the attribute of God, the attributes of love and care and concern, attributes of patience has come to an end and it has changed? How God changed his disposition towards you? No. Yeah, is he going to hastily punish you or quick to chastise you or grudgingly bearing with you? No. He deals with us in a consistent manner, consistent with his immutable attributes 
and his attributes revealed in the gospel are those five words of hope. Christ showed us mercy in salvation. He shows us mercy as Christians, not because we deserve it, because that's who he is. That is the thought which I want to drive into your heart. For the past few weeks, we have been going through these truths. Five words of gospel hope and who God is in the deepest recess of his heart. What is his basic disposition towards sinner? And when you come to Christ in repentance, that same God with the same eternal attributes is going to show the gracious, uh, merciful attitude towards you on a continuous basis. And that gives hope for my life. Not the rules and regulation what I follow in my life give me a standing before God, but for who, who God is. He is going to give me the standing before God. He is gracious and humble in heart and He invites all who labor and are heavy laden to come to Him and He will give them rest. He will give them comfort. That's who He is. Beloved, before you were a child of God, your performance did not prompt His love. And now as a child of God, as a repentant person, your performance does not keep his love. This is the key. This is the fountain. This is the focal point where we need to understand. It is not my performance that prompted God to offer the gospel to me. It is his nature. It is his attribute which uh, prompted him, uh, allowed him to plan a salvation for a sinner like me and sinner like you. A sinner just like you and sinner just like me and it is not my performance that keep his love in my life it's a matter of eternal outworking of his eternal attributes that he was pleased to show you your hope your rest is found in the cross of christ your rest your hope is found in the eternal display of the love, kindness, mercy, grace and patience of God. So you keep coming to that spot. You keep coming to that attributes of God and you find the balm for your soul. Balm for your failure. Balm for your lack of performance in your life. And that will allow you to step out of a legalistic mind. You do everything to God to exhibit your gratefulness and love for this abundant uh, attributes which he has showered upon our, your, your life and my life. I invite you to look outside of yourself to Christ day by day and with each passing moment. Look to this Christ. Look to his work on the cross, the marvelous attribute of your salvation. All what he did, all what he prompted his own character, prompted him to do certain things on behalf of sinners. Go back and read these passages again and again. As you do that, you will find strength to meet your sin and trials. And let me say to those of you who are not in Christ, you have not sinned your way out of being able to receive this grace. I will tell you, no sinner is so great that Christ cannot save you. There is no sin that is uh, uh, not able to be handled by the cross of Christ. And that's a great hope. And Christ says, come to me and I will give you rest. And rest without sin. Rest in a position where your salvation is secured for eternity. To that end, may the Lord prompt your heart to think through these things. May the Spirit of the Lord help you to meditate on these things. Go back to these passages and see for yourself the great offer of salvation and embrace Christ by faith. Trust him for who he is and you will live life in a different arena and you will live a life which is worth living for his glory and for your eternal good. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for teaching us these truths. We have learned these five words as your attribute, your character. And all these things were prompted by your own nature and not uh, anything in us. 
So it is not our uh, performance that prompted you to offer a salvation. It is not our performance which sustains our salvation. So we give all glory to you and your Christ and to the Holy Spirit and to triune uh, God be all the glory, honor and praise all through eternity. In Jesus Christ's most precious name we pray. Amen.